Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Creeps, Creatures, and Haunts. Oh, my. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about, what, just spiritualism? Spiritualism and um, how it kind of pertains to, like, like communicating with ghosts and ghost hunting and things like that. Yeah. If you haven't seen it yet, because I assume this episode will be coming out after the Ouija board episode that kind of ties into that a little bit because we mentioned spiritualism in there. We talk more about specifically spiritualism surrounding the Ouija board, um, but this is going to be more of a deep dive into just spiritualism in and of itself, though. So I will let um, Kim take it away here in just a second, but make sure if you're new to the channel or haven't done so yet and you like our content, you like and subscribe to the channel, check out our Patreon if you want to help support us. There's different tiers. You can get different fun little things for different tiers you're in. And you can also become a channel member now so that's the thing you can do. It's like $5 a month and you get you get like special little perks, like little stickers and stuff, but it really is just to help support us. And the last thing is we do have a merc store now. So if you want stuff with Skull Bob on it, Scully here, um, if you're just listening to this and you've never seen it, um, it's literally the logo that's on the podcast behind the words Creep Creatures and Haunt. We have a whole line of like shirts and stuff with that printed on it. All the links are going to be in the description of whatever you're watching or listening on. That being said, I shall let Kim take it away. All right, so spiritualism is basically a religion that is based on the belief that spirits of the dead exist and can communicate with the living. And there's actually spiritualist churches. Um, in fact, there's one really? just not too far away from me in Hudson. Um they have basically three beliefs in spiritualism. It's that that they can contact the dead. The afterlife is more advanced than what we're in now. And that spirits can provide knowledge about moral and ethical issues. Um, so that's why they try to communicate with them. They want to know, you know, secrets to life, so to speak. Um, so the church, and wait a minute. So like the church, what kind of like, what? religion is that like what's it's the name just, of it it's any kind of religion it's just spirit it's it's spiritualism it's yeah because there is actually a church in hudson that is i think it's called spiritualist church or united spiritualist church i think it might be called huh. and they um basically believe in you know god and and you know scripture and things like that but then they also believe that they can commune with the dead by way of seances and you know other forms of communication in order to get enlightened and find out information and stuff like that interesting yeah um it was developed and reached its peak in like between the 1940s and the 1920s um it was very popular around the time of like um civil war and stuff like that when a lot of people were losing family members to you know death in the war and things like that they wanted to communicate with them and see how they were and um if they were okay and things like that um by 1897 there were actually eight million followers in spiritualism in the u.s and europe and they were mostly middle and upper class people. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's the opposite way that it is now. I feel like more people <laughs> that are like lower class tend to believe heavier in like maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's actually difficult because also like you see – I mean I guess it's really hard to tell like people's like um, social status or yeah. whatever – but, like, I guess, I don't know, when I think of people who believe in ghosts, I just don't generally think of, like, upper-class people. Yeah. Those are the people I think that will poo-poo on you for it. <laughs> but, I mean, I do know people that would be middle or to upper-class people that are very much into, yeah. like, ghost hunting, you know, not necessarily to spiritualism in of itself, but hmm, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, They also, people of the spiritualist um, movement were big supporters in um, abolition of slavery and women's suffrage. Um, they basically, you know, wanted equal rights for 
pretty much everyone. Uh, Imagine by, that. <laughs> I know. Big shock <laughs> there. Um, by the late 1880s, um, the credibility was kind of weakening because of a lot of fraudulent mediums, people pretending to be mediums and yeah. communing with the dead. And, of course, they mm. weren't actually doing that because there was a big upkick where there was, like, just a ton of people pretending to be psychic mediums. Um, Still a thing, but... Big thing was um, Harry Houdini actually mm. sought out and did, a, like, a worldwide tour where he would just go around and just disprove... People who claim to be a psychic medium. And he would just have shows about it. And he's like, yeah, come on down. You think you're a psychic medium? I want you to prove it to me. And he would totally disprove them. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people that you um, are part of the spiritualist church use their spirit guides for guidance. There is um, you, a lot of people do have actual spirit guides, um, whether they're like a loved one or just some random spirit that they ended up talking to. They use them to guide them through their daily lives, give suggestions of what they should do, things like that. Sure. How do you find a spiritual guide? Like if you I, are currently without guide. <laughs> um, well, you basically do like... Um, when you're doing, you know, a seance or using a spirit board or whatever, it's whoever comes across through. and talks to you. And if you get the same spirit every single time, that person is probably your spirit guide. So, like, a lot of people, I think, like, too, like, I know this happened with my one cousin. We had an uncle um, that passed away, and I think she kind of thought that he was kind of her spirit guide. And, you know, I don't think there was anything ever really necessarily relative to the fact that she thought it was this particular person. But certain things happened after a certain person passes away. And I think that people kind of, like, will associate that as your spirit guide, be it your mom, your grandma, some kind of family member, even a friend maybe. Yeah. And, I mean, again, it's kind of more of, in my mind, probably a mechanism of uh, dealing with grief. Like, yeah. oh, they're with me and they're guiding me and stuff. And there's not necessarily anything, I guess, harmful about that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm perfectly okay with people believing what they want to believe as long as it's not harming themselves and or other people. Yeah. Um, you know, you can believe whatever you, you know, when you believe you can believe pigs fucking fly as long as it doesn't, like, <laughs> make you a bigot. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's the, <laughs> that's the clip. <laughs> that's the clip I post that's on social the clip. media. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I find that actually interesting, like the idea just of spirit guides in general and like how one necessarily thinks and, you know, like after a certain, like maybe you become what you consider to be successful in life. Does your spirit guide leave you? Are they there forever? Like, do they stay with you until you die? I guess so. Yeah. Then what if you are someone's spirit guide? Are they their spirit spirit guide? I guess huh? they kind of help you. Right. Right. But I mean, like. So, like, if this person is this person's spirit guide, then this person dies, and then the next person's spirit guide, does the spirit have a spirit guide? Sure. The spirit spirit guide. Yes. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, if you can guide someone in the the normal, what's the, what's the opposite of afterlife, the normal life? Normal life. I don't know. Like, the, the living. Living. The living, then, like, can you communicate with the dead? Like, the dead, can they communicate with one another? You would think. Well, yeah. Um, they The spiritualists actually believe that there are different levels in the spirit world where there's not just one heaven and hell, where there's actually different levels of heaven and hell. <laughs> so you could be like in, you know, level one hell instead of level, level ten hell. With level one, which is worse. <laughs> I, I feel don't like the know. deeper you go. I think it's probably, yeah, yeah probably, the deeper you go. You know, but I mean, worst. that actually is kind of like an interesting thing. Like, not even joking, but like... Like, if someone, like, if you have a spirit guide or something like that, if you believe in that kind of thing, and, like, maybe you die prematurely, like, something terrible happens in your life, like, I wonder if there's still some kind of attachment from your spirit to their spirit at that point in time. Well, yeah, because a lot of times people say, like... Maybe they will help you get into where you need to be in the afterlife. Yeah, well, because when people have, like, near-life experience, near-death experiences and stuff like that, they actually say they see... You know, their loved ones and their spirit guides and stuff like that on the other side. Yeah, maybe that's why when people have near-death experience, like, say they see their, like, recently departed spouse or something, maybe that is their spirit guide. And now, mm -hmm. like, since they're on the cusp, they can actually see them in their physical form instead of yeah. just, like, feeling. Mm. Yeah. Um, so spiritualism was uh, developed by Emanuel Swedenborg. And... Uh, 
it first kind of like made its big um, appearance in 1840s in the burned over district of upstate New York. It seemed like upstate New York was where it kind of like really took off. Um, Seems like a New York thing. And uh, the spirits are actually intermediates between God and humans. Mm. So you can kind of essentially talk to God through your spirit guides, I guess. Mm. I don't know if I like that as much. but Yeah. Um, there were also different ways that people used, um, with, you know, obviously using, um, doing seances, table tapping, Ouija boards, spirit boards, things like that, uh, that were ways to commune. Mm -hmm. Um, Franz Mesmer was actually brought in as well as a, as a spiritualist, and he started using hypnotism. In order to communicate with spirits. That's another idea, man. There's a lot about hypnotism that is very interesting. That could be a podcast in itself. Yeah. Like how you're able to recall memories. And there's a lot of stuff with aliens when you get to that too, which of course <laughs> is my favorite thing. Um, but yeah, that's... Hmm. Yeah, they would use it like as a way of like putting somebody into a trance-like state. And then right. they would communicate with the dead through that. Basically how you would channel somebody. Um, is you get into a relaxed state yeah. and you allow the spirit to essentially use your body to communicate. Yeah, I've never been to like a medium or anything, but you definitely mm -hmm. see that in like movies or television shows where mm -hmm. I guess that is, it is like a form of meditative state that they put themselves in to basically be able to channel the words of spirits yeah. or whatever. Usually it doesn't go so well if you're watching a movie, but. Yeah, usually not. And so they're spitting up green stuff, or you know, or just like they all. It start a lot of times. It starts good. Up walls. Or well, like they'll like, like start good, and then all of a sudden they'll have another message, and yeah. then and then something yeah. terrible happens. They I was almost run off a cliff. Yeah, yeah, I was watching. Like um, spoiler alert: if you haven't watched them, um, Archive eighty one. But there's a scene, and Kim hasn't. But that's okay. It's not that big of a spoiler. It was just really freaky. There's like a seance scene, and. Um, Basically, a message is relied, and it basically just drives the medium insane, and she starts clawing out her eyes, and it's quite horrific. Mm -hmm. So, go watch that show. It's real freaky. Yuck. <laughs> um, some of the more famous spiritualists were um, around in the 1880s were the Fox sisters, Kate and Margaret. They made contact with the spirit through wrappings on the table. So basically doing that, knocking on a table. They would ask yes or no questions, and the mm -hmm. spirit would, you know, knock once for yes, twice for no, things like that. Um, they actually became the first celebrity mediums of the spiritualist movement. And they... Um, they would do tours and go all over the place and communicate with the dead. And um, they actually, in 1888, admitted that most of the communication was a hoax. Huh. But then they recanted that almost immediately after. So I don't know if they were like... You can't say that and be like, just kidding. Yeah, like, it, it's kind of weird how they would be like, okay, yeah, never mind. No, no, just kidding. It's all real. We were yeah. kidding when we said it's all fake. Like, then why would? That's dumb. Um, a lot of spiritualists were of different religions and such like that. A lot of the early participants were actually Quakers who were kind of, like, very, like, strict with their... They were basically, like, Amish, but not as, like, super strict. Like, they used electricity and shit like that when it was around. But, <laughs> Those um, heathens. I know. Um... There was also um, quite a few, like, women that were involved in spiritualists. One of the most popular was a trance lecturer, was Cora L.V. Scott. And she was um, just somebody you totally didn't expect to be this medium or spiritualist. She was young, beautiful, and very fascinating to men. Like, people were mesmerized by her, so to speak. Um, another popular one, and I don't know if I'm going to say her name right, is, uh, Asha Sprague, mm. who was from 1827. She became very ill with rheumatic fever at age 20 
and actually credits her recovery to spirit. Um, and she became a spiritualist because of that, because she believed that spirit actually helped her heal and come back from her fever. Um, one of the more famous women was um, actually Mary Todd Lincoln, first lady to oh, yeah, I Abraham kinda, Lincoln. I meant to mention her actually in the Ouija board episode because she was like kind of known for using yes, them. I she forgot would about that. Perform seances actually in the White House. That's why a lot of people mm-hmm. think that the White House is very, very haunted. Um, oh, yeah. In order to communicate with her there. son that actually died. And then, Mm. obviously, she tried to communicate with her husband after his passing as well. Um, And then... um, I wonder if she was ever successful. I wonder if there's, like, records. I think there might be something. There might be, like, a book or something like that. Yeah, link us that if you're listening slash watching. I'm curious. Because I know that she does, but I never looked much further into if there was ever any, like, recorded documents of responses she got. And then, of course, back to Harry Houdini, who actually made a kind of a pact with his wife that um, she would each Halloween try to commune with him. I do remember hearing about this, yes. And every Halloween until, obviously, her death. And I actually think somebody else does it now. I don't recall who does. Um but they still try to communicate with Harry Houdini, even to this day. Every Halloween, they perform a seance and try to talk to him and see if they can get him to talk. Hmm. Yeah. Um, some people that also were involved in the spiritualist movement actually formed one of the first, um, I would say, paranormal investigative teams so to speak, known as the Ghost Club. (laughs) What a name. Yeah. I I think it was kind of a fun little name. They were founded in London in 1862, and um, they include members like Charles Dickens, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Peter Cushing. Um, It's a lot of paranormal people names. Yeah, well, Peter Cushing, I mean, he was in, like, every vampire movie, like, known to man, pretty much. Um, Charles Dickens, I mean, you think about A Christmas Carol is basically talking to ghosts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Through the whole thing. Like, right. yeah. Um, Sir Arthur. They're more like Conan Doyle. Um, I mean, he was big into the whole controversy with the fairies. (laughs) That's another um, episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll talk about fairies. Those. Yeah, well, there's, I'm sure, a lot of interesting stuff about fairies, actually. There's a lot of people that believe that that's a thing. Yeah. As silly as it might sound to some listening to this, it's, yeah, paganism and that, yeah. It's... I've seen some interesting videos with things that are supposedly fairies, so, I mean, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, this, yeah, this is supposed to be, like, the lar- the longest-running group of people who are actually investigating into ghosts and stuff like that and a lot of them are spiritualists they did dissolve (laughs) yeah Um, (laughs) well they i mean they could they might still talk to the original members maybe do you think like during like their meetings that that's that's how they conduct their meeting it's just it's just a seance well yes yes, the original yes yeah well no it actually says that each november 2nd each member living or dead was named So they would go down a list of every person's name and they claim that sometimes they felt the presence of deceased members at Hmm. these meetings. Yeah, I mean, if you're the ghost club, why not? Yeah. Um, They did believe in psychic phenomenon. Uh, Unfortunately, the membership was very small and it mostly included men. Um, It didn't start letting women into it until... Uh, quite later, well, in I the nineteen thirties and such. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, yeah, though they were big into um, women's rights and things like that. But they didn't let women. But join. they didn't let women into That's, the group. That seems interesting. Like, yeah, um, yeah. The club, though, they weren't considered a 
um, at the beginning, they were considered a spiritualist church, but now they're kind of like, um, more like, um, a bunch of skeptics that discuss paranormal topics. Um, they actually do have a website if you're interested in looking it up. If you do put in the ghost club, it will come up. Yeah. Um, you could become a member. If you live in the United States, it's like 25 pounds to join this club. Yeah, you're saying you get like things. For and too, they you know, do yeah. um, have, you know, the occasional investigations and stuff like that. Um, they don't do anything that is like clearing of a location or exercising any spirits. And they also do not allow Ouija boards. Of course they don't. Yeah. Which, I see that right there. It's like, I mean, come on, really? Like, because you know that they used to use them. Oh, probably. Sure. They definitely used to use them. Because, yeah, go watch the whole video about that. Because we don't want to talk about it too much there. But, you know, because our, our video, the last one we, the well, last podcast we should have done before this would be, um, are Ouija boards evil? You know, and spoiler alert, we don't really think that they are. So I find it interesting that they would, like, oh, we're not going to allow that. And it's mm-hmm. just like, that's dumb. Right. Well, because a lot of places do that now because they, you know, yeah, if you watch the video, Ouija boards have gotten a bad condemnation, like, just from lately. Um, but before, they weren't really all that bad. And, yeah, I'm sure a lot of spiritualist groups and churches and stuff like that used them to communicate with the dead. Um I mean, any kind of form that you use to communicate with the dead is basically opening you up to being, you know, having activity happen or having a spirit trapped there. If you don't open or close your communication properly, if you don't tell them, okay, we're done here, you need to leave, goodbye, they're going to be like, oh, I'm just going to hang out and, you know, open cupboards and make noises and, and do shit. Um, but, uh, I do find it kind of neat that there is actually still spiritualist churches. Because I know there's one in Cleveland somewhere, because it was actually featured in a ghost hunting, um, one of the ghost hunting shows where they actually were, um, the reason they thought that the house was haunted was because this person was going to their church communing with the dead and then bringing those dead people back home. There's one in Kent. <laughs> it's just right by us. Oh, okay. The first spiritualist church of Kent in Kent, Ohio. Yeah, like that. Go. Interesting. Huh. I don't pay attention to churches too much, but it sounds like a, maybe they're a little more fun. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they still believe in, you know, like regular stuff. Like some of them are Catholic, some of them are, you know, whatever denomination they choose to be, um, or non-denominational. I know a lot of them are non-denominational, where they still just believe in the Bible and things like that. But then they also believe that they can speak to the dead to get guidance, so to speak. Just imagine, like, after, like, your, like, Sunday morning gossip holes after you, like, sing and stuff, Mm -hmm. then, you know, Mm -hmm. Pastor Bob, like, starts talking to dead grandma. Yeah. That's basically what they do. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I kind of want to go attend one. I know. I do kind of, I'm Sounds curious fun. about yeah, it. I'm yeah. I'm kind of curious. I don't really, I mean, has anybody that's listening or watching this, um, have you ever been to something like this? Are we, is this something that they really do? Are we just wrong? <laughs> are, we, are we just <laughs> sounding really ignorant right now? I don't know, but it sounds, it sounds kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind being a member of that. Right. I mean, it's got, like, things that I actually, you know, I try to talk to the dead as much as we can. <laughs> Spir- spiritualism just it really goes deep because um, I'm just thinking about it. Uh, not many people have watched this video, but I highly recommend that you check it out here. On our channel, we went to um, the Toledo Art Museum last year, had a... I forget what the name of the expo was, but it was basically a spiritualist oh, yeah. art expo. Yeah. And there was, like, photographs. Like, they're supposedly supposed to be real photographs. And, like, mm-hmm. these are old photographs. So they're definitely not, like, photoshopped. But, you know, what it is that you're seeing, who knows. But there's, and we show a lot in the video, 
you know, people with, like, ectoplasm out of their mouth, and just, like, all kinds of, like, crazy stuff, and, like, a really old contraption to help, like, um, contact ghosts. It's a real crazy thing that they had that on display there that still works, yeah. <laughs> in quotation marks. Well, th- back in the spiritualist movement, like, um, back when spiritualism, like, became, like, a big boom and stuff like that, yeah, that was ways that they were, like, communicating, and, like, they had the ectoplasm was coming out of them, and... They were trying to take ghost photographs and trying to see the dead loved ones and stuff like that, and all that kind of different um, things. Well, there, yeah, were and created. Created that right, because I mean that was a big thing too. Is like artists, um, they would not. I mean, there's automatic writing, of course, which is where spirit mm-hmm. basically influenced your body, right? But um, like automatic drawing and like painting yeah. and like you know the basically they they had all these paintings there that were claimed by the people that a spirit basically used their body and like mm-hmm. and then they painted basically what the spirit willed them to yeah i mean obviously who knows if it's true i mean because yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to make your piece more interesting that definitely is a way to make it more interesting be like oh yeah spirit made me yeah. paint this yeah i didn't actually paint this but my my dead uncle painted it yeah through my body and i mean like that obviously <laughs> makes it somewhere interesting is it bullshit i mean obviously that's the kind of thing where you who knows unless they come out and say oh yeah i lied like you would never know kind of thing but yeah i i find that kind of stuff extremely interesting and cool just the thought that it's possible i guess is just that mysterious allure to things yeah um but they had some real strange art at that place yeah i kind of want to go back and watch that video now because i don't remember a lot of it but i remember there's some stuff that really kind of got to me like wasn't there like paintings made out of urine or something there it was really good there was some there was something there was some stuff that was made out of like bodily fluids and, and there was some like, like really yeah. like um adult images which i don't think we had that in the video because i'm like oh like this is so intense that i think youtube might take it down yeah. so i didn't film s- i filmed most of everything but there's a couple that were like literally like you know female parts mm-hmm. and stuff that were just like there and i'm yeah, like yeah exactly. i don't know if i should film that because youtube might like take that down but it's weird because it's art it's like pornographic images are fine if it's art yes but if it's actual porn then it's not okay and I, and, I, and I find that interesting. Like, if you watch, like, an art house movie that, like, something like Lars von Trier makes, <laughs> it's artsy and it's not actual porn. But then, like, if you were to just take the clips of that out of context, now it's that. Yeah. Like, it's weird how it is really weird. things kind of go that way. But, see, that's how, this is what we call tangents, people. Somehow you can be talking about spiritualism and then it leads to porn. Oh. Who knows? Goodness. <laughs> Ghost porn. Oh, God. <laughs> Ew. I mean, there's not much to see. Uh. <laughs> oh my god, that was that was part of um, what we do in the shadows. Remember oh yeah, when they contacted their dead, their their ghosts. Wasn't there like the ectoplasm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laszlo and Laszlo. It's a good show. If you haven't watched the movie, ectoplasm the thing, or the show on FX slash Hulu, you should watch what we do in the shadows. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so that was a little talk about spiritualism kind of like a little history of it just like a little touch there's so much more like i said now kind of give me other ideas of things maybe we'll talk about give us ideas in the comments or message us us or if you're listening to the podcast go over and leave the comment or click one of the links below we've always mm-hmm. always all those freaking links to like send us messages and stuff like that but as always make sure you like the video if you're watching it make sure if you are listening to the podcast if they allow you to leave reviews do that subscribe And also, if you're watching it on YouTube, make sure to ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. If you're just listening, keep in mind we do more than just the podcast. So, yes, we do the video form. You're not really missing anything by not watching the podcast. You're missing our faces. Our faces. And sometimes we put some, like, pictures on there to reference what we're saying. But you're not missing much. But we do, like, actual ghost hunts. We do haunted house reviews and a bunch of other stuff on the YouTube channel. So make sure if you're just listening, you should check us out over there, too. And, again, no matter watching or listening, all the links for everything we do is always in the description. Um, of the video and the podcast. Thank you very much for watching or listening, and we will see you in the next one episode. Bye.